Surprise, surprise, guys. You know what I got for you? I got this DP, the Pride Productions Josh here, starting off a new tutorial series in the Unreal Engine 4. I call it UE4 Audio because we're going to learn how to manipulate the audio and the music and all that stuff inside of Unreal Engine 4. There's so much cool stuff to do after you're done making whatever you make in Pro Tools. So yeah, UE4 Audio tutorial number one. I got a request from a from a subscriber of mine that talked about having music, your background music, fade based off the distance between you and an enemy. So maybe when the enemy chases you, the music gets louder or whatever or not. Well, we're going to go ahead and get on that. I got F11 all. P, I got this third person character running around in this generic landscape. It took me like three, four, you know, eight, 12 hours to make this because I mean, it's real deal. This is, this is hardcore for F11 and get out of that because that's embarrassing. Now, the thing is, I've already got an audio file right here in the old DP. Now, this is a track that I released to you guys for free called In Edgewise. You can download it off the SoundCloud royalty free and use it in any of your games if you want to. Check it out. It's jamming. Yeah, that's all I'm going to show you. But still, yeah, you can download it for free. I'll leave a link in the description. But anyway, we got to create a blueprint so we can have an enemy. So check it out. Let's make this really, really quick. Go to right-click, blueprint class, actor. I'm going to name it Ball. Because, you know, I got I got a ball. But I'm going to have one if I ain't got one right now. I got a couple. We'll get another one. I'm going to double-click on it, okay? Now, here's the thing. Real quick, we'll go to components. We'll add a component. I'll make sure it's a static mesh. I'm going to name a ball. Okay, because it's that's what it's gonna be. Now, if I go to static mesh here, and of course I've got the starter content in the project, so you wanna you wanna make sure you got some of that. I'm gonna type in the word shape. Oh, you gotta you gotta spell it right. Okay, we've talked about this. Scroll down to where you see shape sphere. I got a ball. Okay, you got a little. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna double the size here. Go to the scale and set it to two, and boom, it's kind of large now. Scroll down here, right there, it's kind of in the middle a little bit or whatever. Or not toolbar. Go ahead and compile that, and we're done. I'll I'll drag it right here. I need to drag it into the world. Okay, so I'm way over here in this in this side right here. So that means I'm gonna put my ball way over here. So we're gonna. This is our enemy. Okay, this is the enemy that's gonna come after us. It's we're gonna we're gonna have it chase us just real quick, and then we'll set up the audio, and I'll show you how we do that. So real fast, let's get it to where this thing moves towards us. Okay. So we we've, we've probably done this before, and if we haven't, I hope I hope this makes sense to you. We're gonna take the distance between us and the the player and the enemy, and we're gonna subtract it. So we need an event tick. Now, the thing we're going to be doing is setting the actor location. So I'm going to set actor location. Okay. Now, the thing is, we have a lot of stuff to do to make this bad baby happen right here. So let's get started. So really, really, really quick, we're going to fly through this. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. I want you to type in get actor location. Okay. And I'll explain what we're doing here in just a second. Get actor location. We're going to need two of them. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract our distance from the, 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 the distance of the, now remember self, since we're inside of this blueprint, it's inside of this guy's blueprint, self is the enemy, the ball. Look, we got the ball, the ball enemy. So this needs to be us. So I want you to type in get player character. You see that? So here we go. We have two, dis we have two locations. We have this location, which is us, the player. And then we have the self location inside of the blueprint of the enemy. And we need to subtract them. So I want you to just drag a line and, and hit the minus button and you'll see vector minus vector. That's what I'm talking about. Done. You know what I'm talking about? Not really. We've got some stuff to do. Now I want to just drag a drag a line from this one right here and type in normalize. So let's norm, normalize our value here. No big deal. Nothing major. Now, this is where things get complicated. Not really complicated, but exciting. We need to multiply the delta seconds. So it, you know the event tick here. So it, it can actually be doing it over time. Every every tick, every every tick based off the seconds in the game. So all it is is you drag a line and hold shift. And I think, what number is it? What is it, eight? And you, on, your, on your keyboard, and you got vector times float. I mean, boom, dude. I'm going to plug this bad baby straight in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that bad baby. I'm going to have another one. Now, this number is going to be our speed. Now, for now, I'm going to set it to 100. And we may change that in a second. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this is basically doing delta seconds, but we need to actually multiply it because this is going to be really, really slow. So this number probably isn't still going to be very fast. And the last thing we need to do is add this new vector we've created to the original location. Now, all you can do is literally just drag a line. Pl press that plus button, brah. You got vector plus vector, and I'll just drag this bad baby back in here, and then I'll drag this, this bad baby in there, and voila. Now that's a little messy, little yellow lines everywhere. Now, let's go ahead and jump into our game, though, and see if it works. We got the event tick set up to set actor location. That's actually all that's happening here, these two nodes. It's just the location seems like it might be a, a little complicated, but it's not. F11, Alt P. Let's see what's happening. Where's that ball? What's it doing? Is it moving? Oh, wait. Look at it. Look at that ball is moving towards us. It's real slow. You know what I'm talking about? It's, it's too slow. It's a little too slow, but oh, God, he's coming. I like it. Okay, let's real quick do one, one, one tiny change. We'll literally just change this 100. Eh, it's, 
watching it at 2.30 because it's 2.30 right now. It's not. It's not, it's not, it's not 2.30. But anyway, let, let's go over here and see now if this bad baby's got a little more speed to it, a little more than double its speed. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's coming after me now. I like, I like that. And see, as you can tell, it's literally just subtracting our distance. It sees my distance. It sees its. And it's just looking right at me and going, hey, I got to subtract, brah. So that means I'm coming at go get you. All right, now here's the thing. Let's go back in here and start talking about this audio. Now, again, I got this jam going on. In Edgewise, like I said, you can download it off the off the SoundCloud for free. Royalty free, guys. Use it in your game. Do whatever. I'll, I'll leave you the link. Now, here's the thing. I need you to do a couple things before we do anything. I want you to double click on the audio. So here's the thing. It opens up a bunch of settings, and we really don't have to worry about a lot of this, okay? But there's a couple things we need. You see looping? We got to have it looping. I mean, because, you know, honestly, that means if it's just going to play the track, and then it's just going to be done. And we don't want that. We want to make sure it continues looping until we tell it to stop. And there's one more thing that's very, very important. You see this. It says virtualize when, or virtualize when silent. Very important. You have to turn that on. If not, when the volume goes down to zero, it won't come back on. This if you, if, if, if you get far away to where you can't hear it anymore, it'll keep playing in the background anyway. That way, when it comes back, you'll hear the music again. Believe me, if you don't check that, you'll have an issue. So make sure you do, and that's pretty much it for now. Now, check it out. I'm going to go over back into the I'm back into the, the blueprint now, right? I'm going to go back to the viewport here or whatever. You don't have to, but I'm going to go to the components, and I'm going to add an audio component now. So add a component, go to audio. It's already going to select what I need. Do you know why? Because it's selected out here. Now, if not, I can, I'm going to go in there and add it. Okay, add audio. Boom. I'm just going to name it audio because that's what it is, is sound. But if it didn't, if it wasn't there, you know how we do, son. You drag it, drop it, and call it a day. So the music is attached to the enemy. The thing is it needs to be attached to the ball. So take audio and drag it over the ball. Now that, that audio file is attached to wherever the ball goes. So wherever that ball's going, it's following us. Okay, just in case the ball isn't attached to the root component, blah, blah, blah. You're just making, like, making a safe choice there, okay? So now let's start this bad baby. And see if that thing's coming after us and see if we get any audio. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh God. He, oh, oh, God. Help. Somebody run. The point is it makes you makes you a little more, a little more frantic now. huh? The music's in there. Kind of scaring me a little bit. I ain't going to lie to you. Now, let's, let's, let's set this up to where it actually gets softer and louder based off of the distance. There's a couple things we have to do here. Now, again, you could double click on here and do a couple things. You can set up attenuation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Attenuation. Very, very quick. Very simple. It's literally the very basics of this. But the way we're going to do it is actually just a slight, uh, just a little different than some people may do it. But we're going to right click on this audio. Okay, you're going to say, cre you're going to see create cue. Now that creates an audio cue. Now, what that's going to do is when we double click on this, it's going to open up kind of like a blueprint, but with the audio. And here we go again, guys. We're back in like audio blueprints. We can add all kind of stuff. There's words, but we're not going to do any of that. But we're just going to click on this output here, okay? I want you to click on the output and go over here and you see the attenuation little tab right here, little, little check box, okay? Now, what it's set up is an inner radius and a fall off distance. Basically, this is the audio volume. So based off of how close we are. So here's how close 400 centimeters or millimeters or manimeters or micrometers or whatever they are away, it's gonna be it's gonna be a full volume here, anything in this area. But from 400 to 3,600 micrometers or millimeters or whatever they're called, it's gonna slowly fade off. Once it gets past this, there won't be any more volume. You know what I'm saying? So after he's a certain distance away, we won't have any more volume. So as you can see, I can press play. And we got our sound there. And like I said, you can adjust a few more things here, but we're not going to add any nodes. Just boom, the audio into the output, save it and call it a day. Now, there's a couple things though, right? We need, to, we need to go back into our blueprint, which is right here, and we need to actually replace it with the cue. So real simple. We'll go right here, grab a cue real, real big, bruh, and drive it in here. Now check it out. You see the attenuation radius now, and that is nasty. Now that's gonna help us, because we can compile now, and we can go out here, press G so we can see the game, and then actually click on the ball, and we can see the radius, okay? Now I can tell you right now, it's a little bit too big. You know what I'm saying? And that's very simple. We can we can just go back into our cube by double-clicking it. It's over here on the uh, the third tab. And I'm gonna set the, the inner radius just a little bit smaller, but I'm gonna set this to 2,000. I think that might be pretty good, and we'll save it. And like I said, toy with these numbers, have fun with it. But this is just a start. And then, of course, you have your type. Your type, you could do different types of attenuation sizes. We're going to do the sphere just to keep it simple. But as you can tell now, <laughs> the sphere isn't overlapping to the character when the game starts. So when I when I start getting close to him about right here, we're going to start hearing the music. It's going to keep growing and keep growing. And once we're about here... It's going to be real loud, son, okay? But if we get out of that circle again, it'll be quiet. So let's check it out. Let's F11 and Alt-P and see what happens. There's a ball. It's coming after me. Oh, 
Oh, oh. Did you hear that? We get too far away. Get back into it. Yes. There he is. He's, he's coming to get us. You got to keep on. You got to keep on going, bro. And you get away from him. You go, oh God, he's, he's, he's still chasing us. He, oh, God. We got away. Everything's fine. And then you could set it up to where, you know, if he gets too far. Oh, no. No. I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to. Just give me a minute. Just give me one more second. I, uh, oh, just a second. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Yep, yep. Okay. So you could set up the game to where, like, you know, if, if he gets a certain distance away, he stops chasing you. That way, you know, the music will stop for good. And then, you know, he won't come back unless you, you're saying, no. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, God. You know what? Why am I doing this? Anyway, the point is, you know, like, you, you could set up the attenuation a little different. But here, that's a simple way. And that's just one way of setting up a simple distance-based volume. Now, there are other awesome ways to do it that are very important when it comes to doing blueprints and cross-fading and stuff like that when it comes to, like, audio and background music and all that stuff. But there's a simple way. Like I said, there's one way to do it real quick, just showing off the very simple basics of UE4 audio. You know I'm talking about? The, the attenuation of each audio. And like I said, every you could do that with every audio file. And again, you could just create an attenuation and plug it straight into this right here. You can create an attenuation setting. But again, I like to create the cues because I can jump in here and I can add all kind of stuff, a mixer and stuff like that. And you're like, what is that? Guys, don't worry. We're going to be going over it soon, but this is only UE4 audio tutorial number one. We got a ways to go. But yeah, guys, one more time. F11 all P. I run up to the ball. The ball starts playing music and I get scared and I run away and then I turn it off because I'm frightened. But guys, thank you guys for watching the Pride Productions on YouTube. Hit up the channel, subscribe to it and check out. We got almost 100 videos, man. Man, rock them. Check them out. Learn some stuff. Listen to some music. We got free music. We got EPs out. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for the SoundCloud so you can actually download this track and use it yourself. Like I said, it's totally royalty free. I have a couple of them on there that you guys can use if you need them. Enjoy. Uh, thank you for listening and thank you for thank you for downloading. Thank you for using it. Um, but yeah, guys, hit up the Facebook page too, man. Deprive Productions. Let's get the numbers up. Hit up that SoundCloud. Like that. Follow us on there, man. Let's get these numbers up. YouTube's killing it. You know what I'm talking about? Love y'all. Y'all been amazing. I hope this was useful. Uh, I, I, I can't remember the name of the subscriber, off the, the subscriber off the top of my head that asked for this type of tutorial. But man, I hope this helped you. If it did not or I did something wrong, hit me up and I'll smack myself. And then I'll try to fix it or I'll have somebody else smack me. And then maybe even have them fix it. But besides that, I love you guys. Miss you guys. This is the beginning of a new tutorial series. It's going to get serious. Peace.